الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد ان افرت ایو المحبة ایو الاحبة ان افرت to encourage myself and those listening to remove and ourselves from sin and to benefit from this holy month of Ramadan I wanted to narrate one hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this hadith of the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam is a hadith which shows us the importance of shyness al haya min al iman that shyness is from iman and in this day and age unfortunately they encourage assertiveness to such a de degree they want li women to be the leaders of everything they want women to run the households they don't want them to have any kind of shyness anymore. She should be the aggressor. She should be the one asking for dates. She should be the one taking care of the husband. She should be the one working. She should be the one doing this without and, and removing the barrier of shyness. But Islam does not accept that. Islam does not accept that. Islam encourages us to have shyness. And especially with regards to the actions that we do that we shouldn't be outwardly sinning the other day a real situation as we're in the holy month of Ramadan I saw I was going to take care of some paperwork at a government office and mashallah tabarakallah now there's many Muslims in the Seattle area the greater Seattle area from Seattle to Olympia from all these cities in between and in, in the greater Washington state and I saw two sisters in there wearing loose hijab but one she was eating now we don't know perhaps it was her time and she's not permitted to fast right now perhaps she is afflicted with sickness but she was a very young woman but the, po the point being is how we often find ourselves and our brothers and sisters flaunting our sins being open with no shame that should never be the case we should never the fact that we do sins is one thing we should strive our best to move, remove the sins but to be open so that others can see and that they will follow that way that is shameful and that is what Islam uh, discourages to the uh, fullest extent that you should cover your own faults and make tawbah, make repentance, Co but cover your sins. Don't be outward, outwardly cursing, and it's Ramadan. Outwardly speaking evil in this one, in Ramadan. Outwardly looking at zina, and it's Ramadan. And in front of the believers, wa'iyadhan billah min May Allah forgive us and protect us from our many sins that we commit. The hadith is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud or an Abi Mas'ud Uqbat ibn Amr al Ansari al Bedri radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in mim adraka al nasu min kalam al nabuwa al ula. إذا لم تستحى فاصنع ما شئت رواه بخاري. In the hadith of Abi Mas'ud Uqba bin Amr al Ansari al Bedri رضي الله تلا عنه. He said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said. One of the things that the earliest people
had to adhere to from the statements, the prophetic statements, from the early prophetic statements, meaning the prophets before the Prophet wasallam, is that if you don't have shyness, then do whatever you please. And this was related in uh, Sahih Muslim. Letting us know that having shamefulness or shyness is from Iman. And that a person with no shame, that they'll just do anything outwardly or wherever as they please according to their desires. Well then there's, meaning there's no limitation for that person. They're already finished. There's no limitations. And in this day and time, we need to rein that in as believers, especially. As believers, because as we know, we're not ordered to follow anyone's sunnah except for the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We see nowadays, we live in a time where we see many women that are the aggressors, that they are uh, aggressive in every respect. Women want to have many husbands. In fact, here in Seattle, Washington, I think it's the most popular place possibly in the world where they have a whole lifestyle called poly amorous or polyamorous or whatever it's called, poly something. Meaning that the people have many spouses, the husbands and the wives. And it really, it's just a type of muta, a type of, uh, if you want to call it temporary marriage, where it's so open that the wife shares her bed with many, many people in various cities, in the same city. You know, she lives with her husband and she visits her other husband. And so the problem, one of the many, amongst the many problems with that, of being so outward and so f blatantly uh, in violation of all the prophetic scriptures, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, is it shows no shamefulness. And also, if she were perhaps to get pregnant, because they, no one can stop that for sure, whose father will it be? You're just going to go get tested, a DNA test to find out to determine who the father. This is, it's, it's kind of a, uh, uh, it shows a type of illness in the society. And these illnesses spread from a lack of shyness and a lack of shame. So when you have the people advertising on the internet for extra additional uh, partners, advertising zina, various times of zina, homosexuality, every kind of thing you, you, you could imagine is advertised. Even bestialed, even some people, they go to the animals. That shows you no shame. I read in, a, in an article where a man in, I think it was in the UK or, or, or one of the European, or possibly Germany, because they have laws in certain European countries where a person, a human being can marry an animal. That shows they fit right under that hadith. If you don't have any shame, no shyness, then do as you please, because you're already wrecked. So the person who marries an animal, marries an animal, some sort of bond with an animal that's not a, 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 a really a thinking creature, there's a creature that operates by its nature and what it's trained to do. To marry and then go so far to call that, to believe that marriage is authentic and that this animal is consenting and then having sexual relations with an animal. There's nothing lower than that. The people who have gone to that, you know, they, they've, they've fallen under that hadith to the fullest extreme. Do, do as you please because there's no hope. They're, they're, they're destroyed. Spiritually, a person like that is destroyed. I don't care how nice they are. Oh, they're such a nice neighbor. They're such this, they are destroyed. And you should be far away from someone who does this kind of munkar with no shame, outwardly. How do you go to get a marriage license? To marry an animal. Or marry the opposite sex, a man marrying a man. This is the strangest things. We live in the strangest times. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of His infinite grace, mercy, and favor, protects us from the shar. The shar that, that has no end, that we don't see an end, we only see it growing. And in fact, 
We live in a time where Amr bin Maruf and Nahin al Munkar is the opposite. And the Prophet ﷺ spoke about this. Commanding the good and forbidding the evil will be the opposite. Some of the people, they can't distinguish between good and evil. So they command the evil and they do, uh, they, they command to do the evil and they prohibit the good. And this is what we live, the time we live in. I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, protect us from kulli suwa makru, and protect our children and our progeny, and bless the ummah to, to, to revive the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and go forward based on kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the aqidah and creed and minhaj of the salaf of this ummah, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.